Good day everyone, my name is Jen Ford Ibanez Coquilla together with my group mates, uh, Mr. Ephraim Adlin, Ms. Chrissy May Hanyo, Ms. Novelin Berake, and Mr. Kyle Francis Agbon. We are the Group 1 reporters for the subject Environmental Science. Our topic is about the nature of environmental science. So now let me discuss first what is environmental science. Environmental science is the study of the multitude interactions between humans and the world around them, living and non-living things. So, environmental science is the study of how humans or us interact with the world around us, so including both living and non-living things. This field of study is important for understanding how our actions affect the environment and how we can work to protect and preserve it. So let's say, for example, the study of climate change. Uh, environmental scientists study how human actions affect the climate by measuring the consequences with models and analyzing mitigation options. This entails examining data from a variety of sources such as temperature records, ice core samples, and satellite imaging to determine how the climate has changed through time. So they also work on developing strategies to lower the rate of climate change by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So now when we say environmental science, there are also major challenges. So we have here 12 major challenges when it comes to environmental science. So first is the global climate change. So. This includes global warming and its consequences such as rising sea levels, more frequent and intense storms, and changes in weather patterns. So the primary cause of global climate change is the emission of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So these gases trap heat from the sun and cause the Earth's temperature to rise. The effect of global climate change include rising sea levels as what I have mentioned earlier, more frequent and intense extreme weather events and changes in precipitation patterns. For example, uh, the melting of polar ice caps which is causing sea levels to rise and threatening low-lying areas with flooding. Uh, another example is the increase in the frequency and intensity of extreme weather events such as hurricanes, heat waves, and the roads. So next is the management of Earth's water resources. So managing Earth's water resources is a major challenge as water is essential for life but is becoming increasingly poor in many parts of the world. So the depletion of groundwater is caused by over-extraction for agriculture, um, industry, and uh, domestic use. Pollution of rivers and lakes is caused by the release of industrial and agricultural waste into waterways. The effects of these challenges include water shortages, uh, reduced water quality, and harm to aquatic ecosystems. So next is the energy and minerals. So finding sustainable sources of energy and minerals is also a major challenge as our uh, current methods of extraction and use are often harmful to the environment. Uh, the extraction of fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and gas has a uh, significant environmental impact, uh, including air and water pollution, habitat destruction, and greenhouse gas emissions. The transition to renewable energy sources is necessary to reduce these impacts and mitigate climate change. Okay, so next is the food, fiber, and clothing. So meeting the needs of a growing world population for food, fiber, and clothing is a major challenge as it requires a balancing the needs of people with the needs of the environment. The need to increase agricultural productivity to feed a growing world population is a major challenge. Intensive farming practices can have negative environmental impacts including soil erosion, uh, water pollution, and greenhouse gas emissions. Sustainable methods for producing food, fiber, and clothing are needed to reduce these impacts. So next is air pollution and acid rain disposition. So air pollution and acid rain can have serious negative impacts on human health and the environment. Air pollution is caused by emission from cars, factories, power plants, and other sources. 
these emissions can react with water vapor in the atmosphere to form acid rain. Acid rain can damage forest, lakes, rivers, buildings, and monuments. Next is ozone depletion. So the depletion of the ozone layer in the stratosphere can lead to increased levels of harmful ultraviolet radiation reaching the Earth's surface. So ozone depletion is caused by the release of chemicals such as chlorofluorocarbons into the atmosphere. These chemicals react with ozone molecules in the stratosphere and destroy them. The effects of ozone depletion include increased levels of harmful ultraviolet radiation reaching the Earth's surface. For example, the hole in the ozone layer over Antarctica, which allows uh, harmful ultraviolet radiation to reach the Earth's surface. Uh, so next is water pollution. So water pollution can harm aquatic life and make water unsafe for human consumption. So water pollution is caused by the release of pollutants such as chemicals, oil, sewage, and agricultural runoff into waterways. So for example, an oil spill um, that harms marine life and makes beaches unsafe for swimming. Another example is the release of untreated sewage in the rivers or ocean. So that can cause a water pollution. So next is soil erosion, fertility, depletion, and contamination. So soil erosion, fertility, depletion, and contamination can reduce the productivity of land and harm ecosystems. Okay, so soil erosion is caused by deforestation, intensive farming practices, and other activities that remove vegetation from the land. Soil contamination can occur when toxic chemicals or heavy metals are spilled or leaked into the ground. So the effects of soil erosion and contamination include reduced soil fertility and harm to ecosystems. So next is deforestation. Deforestation can lead to loss of habitat for wildlife, soil erosion, and changes in local weather patterns. So deforestation is caused by clearing forest for agriculture or logging. Next is habitat destruction. Habitat destruction on land and in the oceans can lead to loss of biodiversity and harm ecosystems. So, um, habitat destruction is caused by human activities such as development or agriculture that alter or destroy natural habitats. Um, for example, uh, draining of wetlands for development or agriculture can lead to loss of biodiversity and harm ecosystems. So next is infectious diseases. So the spread of infectious diseases, including those caused by organisms that have developed antibiotic resistance, is a major challenge. Infectious diseases are caused by microorganisms such as bacteria or viruses that can be spread from person to person or from animals to humans. The effect of infectious diseases include illness or death in humans or animals. Uh, for example, malaria, which is spread by mosquitoes. Another example is tuberculosis, which can be spread through the air when an infected person coughs or sneezes. So next is sustainability. So ensuring the long-term sustainability of global and national economies while protecting the environment is a major challenge. Okay, so sustainability challenges arise from the need to balance economic growth with environmental protection. For example, uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions is necessary to mitigate climate change, but may require changes in energy production and consumption patterns. So sustainable methods for managing natural resources are needed to ensure their long-term availability. Now that we have already learned what is environmental science and its 12 major challenges, we will now proceed to the next topic, the ecology and ecosystem, which will be discussed by Mr. Adley. Thank you, Ms. Coquilia. My first topic is ecology and ecosystem. Let me discuss first ecology. Ecology is the study of how things, how living things interact with each other and their environment. This includes things like 
how animals find foods, how plants grow, and how the friends, different species affect their uh, each other. Next is the ecosystem. An ecosystem is a community of living living and non-living things that interacts with each other for for example a forest ecosystem includes trees animals insects and the soil water and air around them everything is an ecosystem is connected and depends on each other to survive Lastly, the oceanographic. Oceanographic is a study of, of the ocean and everything in it. This includes things like the water, the plants, and the animals that live in it, and the land underneath it. Ocean oceanographers use tools like boats and underwater robots to learn more about the ocean. For the next topic, we have the level of organizations. The level of organizations describe how living things are, are organized from the smallest unit to the largest. These levels include the first, the individual organism. Individual organism, any living things are included. This is any living things like a plant, animals, or microorganism this could be a single tree in a forest a fish in a pond or a birds in the sky the second one is the population populations is a group of individuals of the same species in a species or a specific area or region at a certain time this is a group of individuals of the same species that live in the same area. For example, all the deer in the forest make up a population. And examples of a, of a population could be all the rabbits living in a meadow or all the bees in a hive. The third one is the community. Community is the whole of organize, organism living in a specific area. It includes organism of different species. This is all the different species that live in a species area, a specific area. For example, a forest community it includes trees, animals, insects, and other living things. A community could be all the different plants and animals living in a coral reef or all the species that live in a desert live in a desert next is the ecosystem ecosystem is a dynamic entities entities composed of of the biological community and the abiotic environment this includes both the living and the non-living things in an area and ecosystem is made up of the community of living things and their environment like the soil, water, and air. An example of an ecosystem could, could be found with its water. Plants, fish, insects, and other living and non-living things. Another example could be a forest with its trees, animals, soil, air. And the last one is biosphere. Biosphere is the total portions of the planet where inhabit the living, the living beings. It includes all the communities and all ecosystems on Earth. This is the part of the planet where all living things exist. It includes all the communities and ecosystems on Earth. The biospheres includes all the different ecosystems on Earth from the deepest oceans to the highest mountain. That would be all for my reports and the next topics will be presented by Ms. Janu.
Thank you, Mr. Adlin. For the next topic, we have the reasoning in science. Scientific reasoning is a way of thinking that helps us understand the world around us. It involves using evidence and logic to figure out what is true. There are two main types of scientific reasoning, inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is when we start with specific observations and use them to come up with a general conclusion. For example, if we observe that the sun rises in the east every day, we might use inductive reasoning to conclude that the sun always rises in the east. Deductive reasoning is when we start with a general idea and use it to make specific predictions. For example, if we know that all birds have feathers, we might use deductive reasoning to predict that a robin, which is a type of bird, also has a feathers. Both types of reasoning are important in science. Scientists use inductive reasoning to come up with new ideas and theories, and they use deductive reasoning to test those ideas and see if they are true. Next topic is the scientific method. The scientific method is a process used by scientists to understand the world around us. It involves making observations, coming up with a hypothesis, testing the hypothesis through experiments or observations, and then using the result to refine our understanding of the world. A hypothesis is an idea or explanation that we come up with to try to explain something we observe. For example, if we observe that plants grow towards light, we might come up with the hypothesis that light helps plants grow. A theory is an explanation that has been tested and supported by evidence. For example, the theory of evolution explains how species change over time through natural selection. It is a general truth about the natural world but not yet universally accepted. A scientific law is a statement that describes something that always happens in nature. For example, the law of gravity states that objects with mass are attracted to each other. Once a theory is universally accepted, it becomes a scientific law. The scientific method involves using creative reasoning and testing hypotheses to learn more about the world around us. For example, scientists might use the scientific method to study how different factors affect plant growth. They will start by making observations and coming up with a hypothesis such as adding fertilizer helps plants grow faster. Then, they will design an experiment to test this hypothesis such as growing two groups of plants, one with fertilizers and one without. Finally, they will use the result of the experiment to refine their understanding of how fertilizer affects plant growth. Now, for the next topic, we have the scientific method step by step. The scientific method is a step by step process that scientists use to understand the world around us. Here are the steps of scientific method. Identify the problem. The first step is to identify a problem or question based on the observations of the natural world. For example, a scientist might observe that plants grow towards light and wonder why this happens. Gather data. Next, scientists gather specific data or information about the problem. For example, they might measure how much light different plants receive and how fast they grow. Formulate a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an, a possible answer or solution to the problem. For example, Based on their data, the scientists might come up with the hypothesis that light helps plants grow. Experiment and observation. Scientists then test the hypothesis through experiments and observations. For example, they might grow two groups of plants, one with plenty of light and one with less light, to see if there is a difference in how fast they grow. The next step will be discussed by Ms. Beraki. Thank you, Ms. John Yu. Now, the next step of scientific method is to formulate a conclusion. Based on the results of experiments and observations, scientists formulate 
a conclusion or generalizations about the problem. For example, if the plants that receive more lights grow faster, scientists might conclude that light helps plants to grow faster. Communicate the result. Scientists communicate the results to others through television, radio, magazines, and science journals. Apply the results. Finally, scientists apply the results to formulate a theorist and scientific laws. For example, based on their experiment with plants and lights, they might develop a theory about how plants use light to grow. So now, our next topic is all about values and attitude. A scientific attitude is a way of thinking that is based on facts and observation. This means being curious, open-minded, and willing to learn from evidence. Here are some examples of attitudes that are important for scientists to possess. First one is belief that problems have solution. Scientists believe that problems can be solved through careful observation, experimentation, and reasoning. For example, a scientist studying a disease might believe that a cure can be found through research and experimentation. Respect for the power of theoretical structures. Scientists understand the importance of theories and models in explaining the natural world. For example, a physicist might use the theory of relativity to make predictions about the behavior of particles moving at high speeds. Thirst for knowledge. Scientists have a strong desire to learn and discover new things. For example, a biologist studying a particular species of animal might be driven by a desire to learn more about its behavior and ecology. Ability to separate important concepts from irrelevant ones. Scientists are able to focus on what is important and ignore what is not relevant to their work. For example, a chemist studying a chemical reaction might focus on the reactants and products while ignoring other factors that do not affect the reactions. Ability to suspend judgment. Scientists are willing to withhold judgment until they have enough evidence to make a decision. For example, an astronomer studying a distant planet might wait until more data is collected before making conclusions about its compositions. Appreciations of probability and statistics. Scientists understand the importance of probability and statistics in analyzing data and making conclusions. For example, an ecologist studying the population of dynamics of a species might ask statistical methods to analyze data from field surveys. Thank you, Ms. Beraki. For the next values and attitude, we have preference for scientific explanations. Scientists prefer explanations that are based on evidence and scientific reasoning. For example, a geologist studying the formation of mountains might prefer an explanation based on plate tectonics rather than one of base of folklore or mythology. Understanding that knowledge has limit scientists understand that all knowledge is always in, incomplete and is and subject to revision. For example, a physician studying the fundamental nature of matter might understand that how current theories are not complete and, and may need to be revised and as new evidence is discovered. Awareness of assumption. Scienti scientists are aware of the assumption they, they make how this assumption can if can affect their conclusion for example an economic studying the effects of a policy change might be aware of assumption about how people respond to the change determination the scientists are determined to overcome challenge find answer to difficult questions 
For example, a medical researcher working on developing a new treatment for a disease might persist their work despite, despite setback or failures. Empathy for the human condition. Scientists care about well-being of people, the impact of their work society. For example, an environment, environmental scientist studying air pollution might be motivated by concern for, for the health of people living in populated areas. Empiricism. Scientists rely on evidence from observation and experiment to draw conclusion. For example, a physiologist studying human behavior might conduct experiment to, to test hypotheses about people make decisions. Loyalty to reality. Scientists are committed to understanding the world as it really is rather that how 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 they make how do how they make might wish to be for example. A, a climate a climate scientist studying global warming might report the the finding honestly even even they are in inconvenient for unpopular parsimony. Scientists prefer simple explanation over more complex one when possible. For example, an archaeologist studying an ancient civilization might prefer an explanation for its collapse based on, on historical events rather than one involving super, supernatural forces. Precision. Scientists are precise their measurement and careful in their use of language, for example, a chemist measuring the concentration of solution might use pre precise instrument and carefully defined units to ensure ac accurate results. Respect for quantification and mathematics, scientists understand the impor importance of quantif quantification and mathematics in describing the natural world. For example, an engineer design a bridge might use mat mathematical models to ensure that it's strong enough to support an intended load. Respect for the scientific para paradigms. Scientific respect, the established prim framework and theories that guide their world. For example, a biologist studying evolution might this work on the theory of natural selection. Purpose by Charles Darwin, scientific manipulation, scientists use controlled experiment to, t to, to test their hypothesis. For example, a, parma a, a paracolo paramacologist testing a new drug might conduct experiment with a control group to determine in effectiveness. Es skepticism. Scientists are skeptical of claims that are not supported by evidence. For example, an astronomer, astronomer is studying UFO science might be skeptical of claims that the Argos might by extraterrestrial visitors unless there is strong evidence to support this idea. Scientists are willing to change the, their opinion when new evidence contradict their previous belief. For example, a geologist studying the age of the earth might change their opinion if new evidence suggests that it is older younger than pre previous, previously thought. The next topic will be the limitation of science. Science is a powerful tool from understanding the natural world but it is a limitation here our limitation of science along along with uh, some example science can answer question about value science can tell us the things work and what their proper properties are but i can call tell us what is valuable of important for example science can tell us how much a diamond went and how hard it is but i can tell the i can ask whether a diamond is more valuable than a piece of art or a family heirloom 
Science can answer question of morality. Science can provide information about the consequence of actions. But it can tell us what are right or wrong. For example, science can tell that smoking cigarettes can cause lung cancer, but I can ask whether morality wrong to smoke. Science can help us with vision about the supernatural. Science is, is based on, on natural explanation for natural phenomena. It, it can provide an answer to question about supernatural being of, of, or events. For example, science can prove or dis disprove the ex existence of ghosts of, or angels. And that concludes our report. We hope that you have gained a lot in our discussion. Thank you so much, everyone.